Let's talk about projectiles in Smash. As any great essay would start, let's visit Wikipedia. Er, Smash Wiki. Projectile is an attacker object that operates independently of the character that used it. This is true, uh, kind of. They're typically used to create pressure on an opponent. This may be shield pressure or pressure to give up stage control. Common examples of projectiles include the charge shot, blaster shot, and thrown items. Almost all projectiles can be reflected, while others can also be absorbed. Okay, this part's good. Projectiles are generally physical, energy-based, or thrown items. But I feel like this really doesn't talk about why projectiles are so crazy in Smash. We can do better. To me, an easy way to think about a projectile is what the design is, how much utility it has, and how functional it is. Let's talk about these ideas a little while we go over some of the iconic projectiles in Smash Brothers. The OG projectile. Remember this shit? Charge shot is almost like the super move of projectiles. You can fire them slowly to force your opponent to approach, or you can charge it, hold it for a while, and get a stronger punish. It's nice. It's a very clear use case as a kill confirm or a hard read. Ed, oh my god, that wasn't even like. Yeah. Can you For the one of the first projectiles ever made, I think this was a good starting block. As the charge shot player, you want to land that juicy situation. And as the opponent, you know Samus is going to be looking for that opportunity to land. But in a lot of ways, this can be limiting. The move is pretty slow, so you can't really use it willy nilly in neutral like other projectiles. Samus's missiles are way more useful in neutral than charge shot. Without proper design of a projectile, you can limit your movement after using it. The move is very clear in its design. Its utility comes in as a finisher and very little more. And it's pretty functional at doing so. Good tech. Oh, and the blaster shot to finish. I think when a character has multiple projectiles, it's very easy to give each of them specific uses rather than trying to add depth to any single one. Samus really doesn't have that many options with her charge shot. You can't use it in the air, except in PM. <laughs> you can release it or roll away really, really poorly, or wait, cancel. Cancel is an interesting concept. Samus can't really do much with the cancel. What happens if we add a little more utility? Depth can be added to a charge projectile by giving the ability to cancel a charge and a clear use case for it. Charge canceling popped off in the later iterations of Smash, and a lot of the characters can cancel their charge animation of their projectile with R. I think charge canceling can add a good amount of depth to several of the projectile characters like Lucario and Mewtwo and Diddy Kong. Even characters that are sort of limited with their charge projectile like Samus and Melee or Dark Samus and Ultimate can charge cancel to make their zoning mix-ups even stronger, but I don't like this as much. Is this good game design? Maybe. It's definitely annoying to fight against depending on the matchup. I think some of the cooler changes from charge canceling come from the properties of the charge itself. For example, Mewtwo Charge in Melee is a hitbox and can be used to catch opponents off guard at times. I wouldn't say it's amazing just because of how easy it is to SDI and punish in melee, but it's still still pretty useful. Lucario's aura charge is insanely useful. My Lucario blood is showing again. In Brawl, Lucario can set up into a dare by charge canceling. And in later games, Lucario can set up into a kill confirm with up smash or back air. The active hitbox, as well as the ability to cancel, gives Lucario solid movement and kill confirms. I like this idea, as it gives depth to the original use of the charge mechanic. So there's an idea there that giving a player more utility, more options, is better. Sometimes. <laughs> we mentioned physical projectiles earlier, and I feel like we can touch on physical while tying into charge. Sheik Needles. Sheik Needles are a physical projectile that you can charge up and cancel with R. In neutral on the ground, it's mainly used at ship damage. A full stack of needles does 17% and makes your opponent feel like an idiot. But they add an interesting twist. Rather than only using it horizontally, like the only other charge projectile at that point, when you use sheet needles in the air, they come down diagonal. Maybe this was inspired by Street Fighter and Smash can't take all the credit, but this is incredibly important to Sheik's playstyle. Allowing Sheik to rain needles down on her opponent enables a strong platform game, pressure strings, and potential follow-ups. We can't not talk about how good they are for edgeguarding. Because of the ways recoveries work in Smash, Sheik needles are so good for covering that diagonal vector all around the ledge. The needles though, ah, oh, there it is. Just a small change to a known format allows Sheik needles utility to go way up. And honestly, it's very functional at the things it does. 
And look at this, he's just needle canceling past him and chasing the rolls down. Is it too strong though? It does have weaknesses. Grounded needles are very easy to combat unless you have a full stack. In addition, Sheik doesn't have the greatest mobility when using her needles and can be stuffed out a lot of the time. Personally, I enjoy this projectile and have no bias. <laughs> the one thing I will say though is I don't like how needles can interact with non transcendent projectiles sometimes because I don't think any character's projectiles should straight up invalidate others. Aerial needles are dope. Grounded needles don't need to beat everything, but they're pretty cool too. <laughs> oh yeah, almost everything. Lasers. Lasers are an energy-based projectile that come out quickly and cover most of the screen. In 64, melee, brawl, and PM, lasers are an incredibly powerful projectile that sort of dictate how the spaces approach their game plan. And then in Smash 4 and Ultimate, lasers definitely got nerfed because of the addition of lightning lag on them. But let's talk about lasers in these other games. Lasers allow the user to tack on chip damage. Approach. Oh no! Zone. And confirm. In the games where they are strong, they are oh so strong. Fox lasers are amazing chip damage in melee, brawl, and PM. Falco has the ability to set up incredible control with his lasers, which is actually pretty much just Fox's laser from 64. Wolf laser ends up being a good zoning tool in the non-PM games, and in PM the move pretty much does everything, so... Lasers have an insanely high utility, and they are very functional at what they do. There are many, many ways to use laser. There's double lasers, laser turnarounds, fake lasers, falling lasers, faking a drift, laser lands and most of them are very useful. You will be hard pressed to find a competitive match where spaces do not use laser, except maybe a mango fox match versus a non chicks. Oh, yeah. Side note, I'm very glad that Falco does not have his double laser from Brawl and any of the future games because man oh man, zoning. This leads to an interesting predicament. Lasers have a problem where they're so good they can validate the strength of other projectiles, which is pretty often seen in melee. Oppressive is a good word to describe lasers in most situations. However, because laser is so strong, laser counterplay is developed through power shielding and taking laser and dashing back and other techniques. And I think this is a very fun idea to play with. Power shielding essentially allows you to use your opponent's projectile as your own. As long as you hit the timing with getting your shield up, it's a fun balancing act to the space animals projectile game. You can shoot the gun all you want, but there's a chance that this projectile gets used against you. So we have power shielding and other aspects of counterplay. And then in the development of counterplay, there's counter counterplay where the spaces will shoot high lasers, mix up their timings, and make it much harder for you to conduct your laser counterplay. Do I think lasers are very strong? Of course. They end up showcasing a lot of variation, counterplay, and speed that I enjoy. Well, maybe not Fox double laser camping on the other side of the stage. Or Wolf of the Bayonet, what the fuck? Items. Contrary to popular belief, there are a lot of items in competitive Smash. Items are projectiles that have item properties. <laughs> this allows characters to hold them and throw them. They are produced by the character and they have a little lag on the pull and a very high amount of utility with varying functionality. This also brings an additional element of depth that was sort of discussed with the power shield meta. How good is my opponent with items? Something I really like that PM did in later versions is normalizing item tosses, so that item play is ubiquitous across the cast. Cause you know, some characters do this with their item throw. In PM there's glide tosses in the air and ground to add some burst movement. I believe there's roll cancel throws in Smash 4 and Ultimate. They can be Z-dropped, a frame one release of an item by pressing the Z button, which can set up some crazy pressure. And on the counterplay end, you can catch any item thrown at you, usually with Z, but it will differ depending on game. And you have power shield counterplay. It's pretty crazy. Let's talk about one of the most polarizing items in the game, turnips. Anybody who knows me <laughs> will know I hate fighting Peach. However, Peach is one of the characters that really benefits from her projectile, especially in her worst matchups. It allows her to cover approaches on incoming, glide toss out a shield, and have other burst movement options in the game where she has glide tossing. It can extend her combo game, it can cover options by ledge, and you can do whatever this is. In a matchup like Peach Marth, where Marth's juggle state and scrapping with Peach can be extremely dangerous for her, she might want to stay at a range where she can pressure him with projectiles. It's also interesting because the utility is highly dependent on matchup. In the Fox matchup, for example, you won't see Peach using turnips as much as the Marth matchup, except in edge guards, where it's decent in both, unless Marth or Fox decides to eat the turnip with their upbeats. There's one thing I really hate about turnips, though, and I'm pretty sure everyone hates this. Oh. 
Oh. And now you're at over 100. And oh. stitch! The RNG. Peach has a chance to pull game-changing turnips or items during your turnip pool. Things like a bomb or a stitch face, and to a lesser extent, even a sword or dot eyes. These turnips incredibly skew the state of the game, and I don't enjoy them, necessarily. However, there is the argument that because turnips are an item, they can still be used against Peach. You can still use that stitch face that Peach pulls. But, <laughs> if Peach had a gun, <laughs> if Peach had a chance of pulling a gun that fired stitches, this would be a separate argument. Peach turnips have a chance of creating a high variance game state due to a win condition pull. As much as I hate fighting Peach, I think most turnips are fine and add a good amount of depth to the game. But man oh man can turnips be high variance. Oh, oh you got Throwing it up. Oh, he's a man, his thunder's gonna grab it! Oh my god, he's gonna fight! I do like the fact that Peach can do so much with them though. Oh my god! Another item, the banana. You know I had to talk about this. Bananas were introduced by Diddy Kong in Brawl, and allowed for Diddy to pull a banana peel to use as a projectile. Its main uses involve being used as an item at a shield and set up as a trap on the ground to literally trip your opponent and set them up for a combo. Not only is this one of the funniest projectiles in the game, it really solidifies Diddy's role as a zoning and trap character, and it may have been a little too strong before. Okay. Oh, Ooh. nicely done right there. Something I enjoy about it is, Diddy can choose to set up his neutral interactions with a banana and forego setting up mix-up or having a pressure situation. Having a banana in your control allows access to glide tossing in any of the four cardinal directions, z-dropping, aerial glide tossing, or the soul fist. Yes, I, I coined that term. Personally, I think Morgan soul fist spam would be a lot more fair if you could use the projectiles that <laughs> she threw at you. Oh! <laughs> Diddy's options are insanely strong because of banana. Experienced Diddy can destroy anyone who doesn't know how to use the banana. However, there are some cons. There's a PM specific con where you can tech banana after it's tripped you. It has a pretty generous window, so a lot of follow-ups aren't necessarily guaranteed, and Diddy has to set up a tech chase or mix-up after the banana toss in order to truly capitalize at some ranges. Then there's the fact that it's an item projectile. Both players can use it. You think Diddy? With the projectile as bad, wait until you see this guy. <laughs> Diddy is very strong with his banana, but it has weaknesses. And then there's bombs. Bombs are so interesting. You know they have to be because I put them above the projectiles I use. Come on. I really enjoy them because I feel like they personify projectile depth in Smash. Appearing in Smash 64 and then being added in every iteration of Link afterwards, bombs are an item that's set up for every aspect of Link's play. Link pulls it, and then sets up bomb stuff. Unlike the other projectiles we've discussed, bombs have an integral part of Link's neutral, punish, and offstage game. Neutral involves bombs to a varying degree, whether it be Z-drop pressure, creative juices of them, or, you know, this stuff. On the punish game, bomb confirms are pretty important. Off stage, Link can blow himself up and do some crazy recoveries. These also have the added element of being used in roll cancel toss and glide toss and aerial glide toss to allow Link's plenty of expression with them. I've only even skimmed the surface of how much you can do with Bomb. Also, Remote Bomb is insane. I don't even play Ultimate that much, and I was amazed at how cool this move was. You have all the complexity of Bomb, now with less knockback for Z-Drop combos, and an ability to choose when to detonate. This is the logical conclusion of my take on projectiles. Bombs aren't the best projectile in the game, and <laughs> if we're talking melee, it's definitely either lasers or needles. In PM, it's either wolf laser. It's probably wolf laser. Come on, there's very little debate on that. <laughs> and its functionality and most of the things it does is average or below average, but it can do everything, and both players can use it, and that's precisely why I enjoy it a lot. Well, in any game or engine that doesn't promote running away infinitely, at least. Making projectiles in Smash is a constant balancing act. What should a projectile do? Philosopher Junebug here with an Omega brain take. You want to give the move utility while staying true to the design of the character. You want to make a move functional without making it so functional that it invalidates members of the cast. I think the more you can do with a projectile that facilitates interaction, the more chance it'll manifest into good gameplay and not whatever this is. The more you allow for a projectile to be used as a tool in multiple aspects of gameplay without making one aspect too strong, the more variation in metagame development you're likely to see. Projectiles are everywhere in fighting games, and Smash is a game that prides itself on its creative movement 
and expression, which comes through in how some of these projectiles work. And I personally like this unique little meta game we've developed for ourselves. It's too good. I gotta go to the bathroom real quick. Scribble. <laughs> Scribble. <laughs> Wait, I'll play that man in turn it. Notes on deck. Alright, well, good, good, good. Like, yeah. Look at oh those arrows! God. And he just spooned oh, up! Oh, and he's still spooned up! No, no jumps! No jumps! <laughs> but maybe I'm just a dirty zoner, man. First <laughs> lead. Look, look, as soon as he grabbed the ledge, look, June, June knew. June knew. He June was like, knew. I knew. I, I met. You done messed up, June. <laughs> you done messed up.